Hey folks, great to have you here. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is October 15th. Now, as most of you know, what I like to do is bring you hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm looking at companies that have the potential to bring us big gains. Now, whether that potential is realized in a day, a week, a month, or even a year isn't what's really important. What's important is which company should you be watching before they pop. And I think you should be putting your eyeballs on this one. This is Avalon Global Care Corporation. They're on the NASDAQ. The ticker is AVCO. Now, this is a biotech. And I'm going to be honest with you, folks. Biotechs are one of my least favorite companies to invest in. But I had a friend show this one to me. He said he saw a lot of potential in it. And he knows his stuff. So I did. I dove into it, took a look. And I'll be honest, it wasn't easy because biotech information can be pretty technical. It can be pretty dry and deep. But once I got past it, once I actually could see what they were talking about, whoa, I did see the potential, not only in making big revenues, but helping a lot of people. Now, this is a clinical stage, vertically integrated biotech. One of the reasons I don't like most biotechs is their only research and development. That means they're not making any money. They've got no products. They haven't discovered anything yet. They're still looking and that costs money. You got to pay everybody, right? So they've got to generate money from somewhere. Where are they going to get it if they're not creating revenues by selling something commercially from their investors? Whether it be big private investors or all of us small investors, they're going to get their money somewhere. This company is ahead of the game. They are a vertically integrated company, meaning they're involved from A to Z. They do the research discovery, development. Once they find whatever it is they're looking for, they then bioprocess, bioengineer, manufacture it. And they support it through its clinical trials, phase one, phase two, and phase three. And that's what I like about this company. They are there from start to finish and they already have revenues coming in. And that's what really kept me here looking at the company. So, I want to share some information with you about this company and because a lot of it is technical, I can't get as deep as maybe one of the management could, but I think I can share enough information with you so you can see what it is they are doing. So we're going to start off with some general information about the company, learn a little bit about their beginnings, and then we're going to focus in on their novel drugs. Now I promise we're not going to get too technical. That's an easy promise to keep, I guarantee. But we do want to see what these drugs do, how they basically function, and how far along the company is with these drugs. So this is Avalon Global Care Corps. They are a clinical stage biotechnology company dedicated to developing and delivering innovative and transformative cellular technologies and therapeutics in the field of immuno-oncology. We are talking cancer here, folks, and that's primarily what they do, fight cancer. Uh, this company engineers smart cells, smart molecules, if you will, that fight cancer in a lot of different ways. And I mean, they fight a lot of different cancers, prostate cancer, breast cancer, all kinds of tumors, uh, blood cancers like leukemia, skin cancer like melanoma, bone marrow cancers. I mean, bunches of them. And now they're working with cytokine storm and COVID-19 as well. And we're going to talk more about that as we go along. Now, the company was founded in 2016, originally on the OTC market, the middle tier, the QB. They then uplisted in 2018 to the NASDAQ, which is where they are now. They are home-based here in the United States in Freehold, New Jersey. However, they do have subsidiaries. I know one of them is working over in mainland China, and they got a huge facility over there to do a lot of research and development there. Now, I'm not real sure what this means, not exactly. 120 FTEs, including subsidiaries. Now, I know what a subsidiary is, and I jumped into the financials. Looks like they've got five active subsidiaries that they are working with. Maybe I missed one or two, but I guarantee you there was no 120 subsidiaries. So what is it exactly they're talking about here? Well, I had to go look that up. Now, I'm going to share that information with you. Full-time equivalent is what that stands for, and it's a unit of measurement that calculates the number of full-time and part-time employees there are in an organization. This is an important metric. It can help businesses manage projects and schedule tasks more efficiently. So what is it they're trying to tell us? That they have five subsidiaries and 115 full-time employees? Maybe that is it. 
So Avco is actually working with three different technology platforms. Oncology, their cancer, inflammation with regard to cytokine storm, and regenerative medicines. Now the inflammation with the cytokine storm has just become a problem here recently with the onset of COVID-19. Many victims of COVID-19 are having far too much cytokine excreted into their bodies and their bodies can't handle it. And they are swelling up excessively. So much so that their internal organs are getting so tightly swelled up that the fluids cannot flow inside the organ anymore. So they are shutting down, ultimately causing the patient to die. And they've also got regenerative medicines. These are stem cell derived exosomes. They act very much like stem cells. They help regenerate our cells, make our skin look good, get rid of wrinkles, stuff like that. And this is a finished product for the company. They call it Act Tex. And they cut a deal with Hydropeptide, which makes all these different types of skin products and sell them around the world. Well, they are now adding X Tex into their products. So I've got to presume that is where the company is getting a good portion of their revenues right now. Now the company is partnering with a lot of organizations, not companies, not businesses, organizations, institutions, medical centers, think tanks. That's who they're partnering with. Like MIT, you've heard of MIT, that is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, UPMC, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, and BOKU. Each one of these organizations have basically adopted, they're helping promote and further the research on one of the drugs. So each one of these organizations is working on one of the different drugs that the company has right now. Now the company has a lot of IP, intellectual property, in the form of patents. They're protecting all of their research so they're not going to have competitors as soon as they come out on the market. Nobody's going to undermine them and steal their research. So they are protected and that's going to help them make a lot of money. And they are addressing a multi-billion dollar market that has unmet needs, completely unmet. I mean, think about this, folks. One out of three people, they say, have cancer in the world. Well, that's got to be close to two billion people. That's two billion people with unmet needs. So yeah, they are addressing a very strong market. Now recently, June of 2021, the company made a very important and big acquisition. They got a hold of San Lang Bio. This is their newest subsidiary. It is currently the largest cell therapy company in Northern China. So they are working in America and China together across the pond. Don't you like that? Now they tell us here that Added CAR-T assets are coming with this acquisition, which include 15 cell therapy candidates targeting both hematologic malignancies and solid tumors. This CAR-T assets that they're talking about, CAR-T is a therapy for blood cancer, but it doesn't work too well with tumors. And it is federally approved here in the United States by the FDA, and I'm sure it's approved in other countries as well. And now it sounds like it's improved. So they've got all this new science to add to what they they already know to make their drugs even better. And this is also where they got that facility that I was talking about in China. It is a 16,000 square foot in-house licensed facility with large scale biomanufacturing and process development capacities. Folks, it's fully set up. You can look online and get a lot of information about this company. It is big. They do a lot. There's a lot of research and development going on over there. So as I said, between America and China, there is a lot of science that is joining hands in the middle. And this company is going to be able to benefit from it all. We are now taking a look at the management. One of the most important things you can actually do research and due diligence on especially if you're going to be holding a stock for a long hold. And that's what I think Avco is good for. Absolutely. They've got lots of different cancer therapies and drugs. Some of them are already being used. Some are in the pipeline. They are going to be making headways with these and it is a huge unmet market that they're tapping into. So I definitely like them for a long hold. And if you're going to be investing your money into a company for an indefinite period of time for a long hold, you need to know the management. You need to know the people you're trusting because they're the ones that can make or break the company, right? That's when your investment is sitting, is in their hands. So doing due diligence on the management is most important with the long hold.
Now, I can't jump into everybody here, but I do want to show you two people just to give you a flavor of what's going on. But I can tell you right now, they have got a stellar management. I mean, with all due respect, they're a bunch of brainiacs over there, a bunch of PhDs, MDs, even ex-politicians. I mean, seriously, you've got some really strong characters over here with this company. The first one I want to point out to you is Daniel Liu. He's the chairman of the board of the company, and not only that, he is also the founder. That is relative and important. Folks, being a founder is like being a parent. He was there at the conception of the idea when the company went on the market. I'm telling you right now, he'll do everything he can to not only protect, but promote the company. It's great. And he is also the chairman of the board of one of the biggest hospitals over in China, Lu Dai Pai. I think I'm saying it right. And it's a huge network, not just of hospitals, but of a stem cell bank, research institutes, and they are using these cancer therapies over there right now. So he's got the ends to a lot of places where they can actually get research done and trials taken care of. Another man on this list is Congressman Billy Talzin. You heard me right. He is the director former U.S. congressman and former president of PHRMA. And there's a lot of other scientists, doctors, and PhDs on this list. Yeah, there's a lot of due diligence to do here, but I bet all of it makes you feel better. All right, I think we're ready to take a look at these novel drugs that the company has. And I'm going to do my best to keep this as simple as possible. But it is very important and relevant that you understand what these drugs do if you're to recognize the value and the potential of the company right? So we're going to take a look at CAR T therapy first. I did mention this one earlier. This is the one that deals with therapy for blood cancers. It does work with a lot of different blood cancers, but not all of them. Not yet. They are working on this and it is getting better. So what CAR T is, is that they're working with the T cells that are in our immunity system and they add a CAR cell to it. A CAR cell is a shimmeric antigen receptor. So if you take a T cell, add a car cell, you end up with a car T cell, right? So this is the basic procedure for the therapy. They take out the white blood cells out of the cancer patient, the T cells. Then they re-engineer. They actually genetically change the T cells in a lab and create car T cells that recognize and attack cancer. They then replicate and duplicate these CAR T cells in a lab, making millions of them, and then reinfuse them back into the cancer patient. And voila, the battle is on. The cancer is being attacked. Now, this was real big news when CAR T first came out. It was all over the science publications. It did get approved by the FDA. They have five approvals starting back in 2017 and up here to 2021. And the market is growing. When it first came out, it was so novel, nobody knew about it. Wasn't making a lot of money. They were doing under one billion back in 2017. And they expect by 2028, this would be an $8.5 billion business. Now, the problem with the CAR-T is it had its shortcomings. There was a lot of side effects to it. It took a long time to duplicate and replicate those cells. It only worked on certain types of cancers, and it didn't work on solid tumors whatsoever. So it needed to be improved. And that's why the deal with Sen Lang Bio was so important. They had 15 new candidates for cell therapy using the CAR-T program, and they have been making improvements to it. Now, I can't get deep into it because there's a lot of scientific information here, but suffice it to say, it is getting better and better. And I do believe they are in their third generation of CAR-T now. They are up to flash car. They are now working with NK cells. These are natural killers. These are cells that can get up to the tumor and crack that shell on the outside of the tumor and get inside and devour that tumor. So as I said, it is getting better and better, stronger and stronger and helping more and more people. We are now looking at a breakthrough technology that the company and MIT together created. They are now patenting for about six or seven uses. This is QTY code. QTY code basically is a program, an artificial intelligent program that they got from Google. And what it does, well, it basically forecasts the future. 
Seriously, it runs simulations, maybe hundreds, maybe millions of them, very quickly, very accurately, allowing the company to choose the right path to take their research down. Now, initially, they got involved with this to solve the protein problem. The company realized that proteins and sugars play a huge part in the way tumors grow, so they had to get in there. But the problem was is that proteins do not break down in water, and they needed them to be soluble. And that's what QTY code did. It made protein soluble for them, so they were able to get their research further on. They also have created transport cells for glucose. Don't know a whole lot about them, except they're smart and they're doing their job the right way. And the last application I want to share with you, I'm pretty impressed by. These are decoy receptors. I like to think of them as sponges or mops. What they are is cells that absorb the other bad cells. Remember we were talking about COVID-19 and the cytokine storm, when too much cytokine is released into your body and you swell up and you die? Well, these cells absorb all that extra cytokine like a sponge. Just pull it right on in. They've also got one of those cells for cancer as well. So they're using QTY to create these smart cells that are doing jobs that have never been done before and are going to help people like they've never been helped before. Now, if you recall, I told you the company had three core technology platforms, one of them being regenerative medicines, and that's what this is. Avalon Actex is a regenerative medicine. Actex is an acronym. It stands for Avalon Clinical Grade Tissue Specific Exosomes. Now, exosomes are kind of new. Well, not actually. They've been around forever, as long as we have, because they're inside us. What I meant to say is that three scientists just recently discovered them back in 2013, I believe it was. And exosomes are very much like stem cells. They are excreted out of specific cells, have a lot of DNA material, and have regenerative properties. And compared to stem cells in adults, they're three times stronger. Now, what they discovered about exosomes is the same thing we discovered in the marijuana industry. I know, strange comparison here. But when we started extracting CBD oil, we discovered there was more than one type of CBD oil. There was lots of CBDs. I don't know if there's 70 or 100 that we've discovered now. And we started isolating each and every CBD. And each one had its own characteristics and features. Each one acted inside of us differently and had different benefits. And that's what they've discovered with exosomes. They have different ones that do different things. And two of them, the Actex E and the Actex M, which work with wound management, skin care, anti-wrinkle, anti-acne, all that sort of stuff, they've commercialized. They've actually got these going into products right now. But they've got other ones here that work with weight management, immune health. Uh, I don't even know what that says. But they've got lots of different ones here that they're going to be able to make advancement in, just like we've been doing with CBDs. Now, as I just mentioned, the company has commercialized, monetized a couple of those exosomes already. Matter of fact, they did it a couple of years ago in April of 2020. And this is the news press attached to that event. Avalon Global Care partners with Hydropeptide, a leader in epigenetic skin care to accelerate regenerative Actex product development and commercialization. They go on to tell us that they are now focused on this new novel combination of clinical grade exosomes and hydropeptides for cosmeceutical and orthopedic product development. They have signed a three-way material transfer agreement between Avalon Global Care hydropeptide, and wild cornell medicine. They're all working together to engage in a co-development and commercialization of a series of clinical grade exosome-based cosmeceutical and orthopedic products. And it sounds to me like the CEO of Hydropeptide is quite happy with this deal. We are thrilled to begin this venture with Avalon Global Care to create a game-changing technology for our customers. We believe our combined expertise will deliver a transformational approach to skincare that will revolutionize the industry.
And when you look at the description here, it gives you some insight to the company that's selling Avco's products. I don't know of any other companies that are moving their products right now. So how big is this one? Do they have a lot of business? Are they in a lot of countries? Well, they have been around since 2004 and hydropeptide has already revolutionized skincare through epigenetic science and peptide technology. Their products work at the cellular level to increase hydration, visibly reduce lines and wrinkles, and enhance skin's natural luminosity. With a multitude of peptides, antioxidants, botanical stem cells, growth factors, and hyaluronic acid, their award-winning products and professional treatments offer a customizable results with driven regimens for all skin types, wrapped up in a luxurious experience. Hydropeptide is currently found in the most prestigious spas, medical spas, and physician offices in over 35 countries. And I was reading that they're doing business with a lot of companies that are doing business in lots of other countries, so they could easily be in more than just 35 countries. The company's unique vision of Epigenetic skin care appeals to the most discerning clients and retailers with an upscale experience and flawless clinically proven results. Now you see all those pictures up there? Those are products from hydropeptide. And I couldn't get all of them on one site. Had to go around. Let me tell you, most of the sites I went to were not in English. Yeah, they've got their products all over the place. You go to Google, there are pages and pages of them. I did find them on Amazon in America. That one was in English. So they've got lots of business around the world right now. And things look like they're only getting bigger. So I really like hydropeptide being a partner with this company. We're going to go ahead now and take a look at some numbers and other information for Avco with the understanding that you realize I did not cover everything that could be said about this company. No way. There's lots more DD that can be done. You have to know that they've got drugs in the pipeline with the FDA being approved, going through phase one, phase two trials, pushing towards those phase three trials. And those drugs we talked about, Folks, they have a lot more applications than just what we touched on to. But you get the idea of what the company's about. They are on the front lines fighting cancer with breakthrough technologies we have never seen before. So there is more to know, but you see the potential, right? So we are taking a look at the share structure right now. Uh, their outstanding share count, they have just under 100 million shares and their float is really nice down here at 35 million. I'm going to call that a low float. Financials. Well, they're making some money, right? They got hydroheptide, which is bringing them some revenues from their exosomes, and they're making money off of some properties. It's not a lot of money, but they're self-supportive. They can pay their own bills, which is a lot better than most biotechs, which are simply R&D, and keep coming to us, the investors, for money. So last year and the year before, they pretty much did the same amount, $1.4 million. We know it's millions because you got to take these three zeros here and put them behind all the numbers down here and they got to keep about four hundred thousand dollars quarterly that they're still in business yeah they're sticking right in there with their average almost three hundred thousand dollars each quarter and they're getting to keep seventy nine thousand dollars so the company isn't making a lot of money but as i said they're self-supportive they're paying their own bills and they've got a lot of things going on right now and as i said this is a long hold we're waiting for things to develop and when something hits oh my god folks you know cancer drugs run to the moon there are lots of infected people out there that need help and there's lots of people willing to invest in medicines to help them let's take a look at their disclosures see if we have anything recent over here uh nothing since september and how about the news? Well, it appears that the news up here is all outdated. 2018 is our most current piece of news. And down at the bottom, we have imported news from August and September. And it looks like we covered both of these, the QTY code technology and that patent that was filed both by MIT and Avco for the QTY for six or seven different uses. All right, let's go take a look at that chart, see where this company's been, and see where it can go. We're going to be doing our charting over here at my free trading platform. This is Thinkorswim. You get it over at TD Ameritrade just for signing up for their free trading account. Just keep your account open, and you can use it anytime you like. So this is Avco, A-V-C-O. We are looking at a one-day, one-year chart. 
And it was almost a year ago they had their high bubble of $1.15 when they were over the 200, which was short lived. She's been under the 200 all this time and she hit a low of 40 cents uh, in May of this year. She's had two nice bounces in the last couple of months. She went from 45 cents roughly up to almost 80 cents. Looks like we got ourselves a new resistance line being built up here right across the top there. This will be a nice plateau to get on top of when we get there. That's down the road. She is still in the downtrend actually and the technicals show that she is still falling on the daily chart. Let's come on down to that 20 day one hour view. All right, so she hit a low bubble here about 16 days ago at 42 cents, pushed herself across that 200 and ripped it right up here to our new resistance line, hitting a high of 79 cents and came right back down the other side. Looks like a mirror image there and hit that low bubble again right there, 42 cents. Now she can't get over the 200. She's hitting her head on it and rolling back down and very likely is possibly going to hit that low bubble again. But, you know, I'm really not surprised that the company's in a downtrend right now. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the market is in a downtrend. Aftermath of COVID, we're still dealing with inflation. And I'll be honest, Avco is a biotech and they haven't got any real catalyst right now and the market is catalyst driven. So it's not surprising that she's in a downtrend. But this is an opportunity as far as I'm concerned. This price, we are just hovering above these low bubbles of 40 and 42 cents. And we know the potential of this company. They've got how many applications for how many different types of cancer? I have no idea. Cytokine storm control? Boy, that's big. Folks, they've got so many things going on that all it takes is one ball to be hit right. And this company is going to soar. Now, when I first got into trading, cancer stocks were the stocks I paid attention to because every time the FDA moved the drug forward, wham, boy, these stocks ran. And when things got to their final approval and got on the market, unbelievable. And why shouldn't they? There's a lot of people out there suffering and there's a lot of good that these drugs can do. And the world literally gets excited about it. I'm excited about this company. I know, I know, at the very beginning of this show, I said I wasn't into biotech stocks. And to be honest, I'm not for the most part. But if there's going to be an exception to the rule, it will be about a company that is working with cancer drugs, especially one that can pay their own bills. I'm serious. I hate investing in R&D biotechs. Not only are they always coming to me for money, but they haven't got anything yet. I have basically invested on hope, right? They've got nothing going on. Where this company, no, this company's got a lot going on. Not only are they already making revenues with skin products, but they have way more than just one drug working against one cancer. I mean, seriously, they've got, well, to me, it's an untold number of applications against a wide variety of cancers using breakthrough technology that could break through at any time. And they're doing this on both sides of the ocean, the United States and China. So anything could pop at any time. And this company will be the beneficiary of either one of the discoveries, as will the rest of the world. So yeah, I like this company for a long hold, a long hold. We've got to give time so things can develop. There's a lot more DD you can do, folks. And it is interesting. You're going to see even more potential the deeper you dive. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.